In our next lesson from Chapter 14, we want to consider the first four steps of the citric acid cycle. Here's an overview of that cycle. It's a sequence of eight catalyzed reactions. As you can see, it's cyclic in nature, and that's distinct from the other pathways that we've looked at. In the linear pathways we've examined thus far, we began with a certain substrate, and we ended with a distinct and different product. In this cycle, we begin and end at the same point. We start with oxaloacetate. Our entering molecule is acetyl-CoA. That gets added to oxaloacetate. Then we're going to go th around through all the steps of the cycle, and we will regenerate that oxaloacetate molecule. We'll see in a later video why it's so important that it be cyclic in nature. So for each 2-carbon acetyl unit that enters the cycle, we will fully oxidize 2 carbon atoms to form CO2. The electrons in the process are passed to three NAD plus molecules and one ubiquinone molecules, and those are in separate reactions. So in the net, acetyl-CoA enters the cycle. We produce two molecules of CO2. We release the coenzyme A molecule, and we generate some stored energy in the form of GTP, three NADH molecules, and one QH2. Here's our first step in that cycle where we form citrate. We start with oxaloacetate, a four carbon compound, and to that we add the acetyl group from acetyl-CoA, and our product citrate is a six carbon compound. So the methyl group on the acetyl will attack that carbonyl carbon, and we end up with our six carbon citrate. So it's attacking carbon number two of oxaloacetate. In the process, we're gonna break the thioester bond of that coenzyme molecule, and here's the coenzyme A molecule being released, and because of that we release 31.5 kilojoules per mole of energy, and that makes this reaction irreversible, indicated by the one-way arrow. The name of the enzyme is citrate synthase. In fact, the name of the cycle is named for this first product, citrate or citric acid. You may also see it referred to as the TCA cycle, or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, and that's because our product citrate has three carboxylic acid groups. You may also see it referred to as the Krebs cycle, and that is the name of the scientist who elucidated the cycle. Here's the citrate synthase enzyme and space filling model. On the left we have the enzyme in the absence of substrate, and on the right we have the substrates bound, the substrates uh, colored in orange. As you can see, it undergoes quite a conformational change in the binding of its substrates. And this is a very common theme, as we've seen before in biological systems. Now we're ready for step two. For your convenience, I've added oxaloacetate, the structure at the top of the screen. Remember, we have to regenerate that molecule, and we're starting with citrate. We're going to isomerize citrate to isocitrate. In other words, we're going to remove that hydroxyl group from carbon number three and add it to carbon number four. We need this because we eventually need to form a carbonyl group at carbon number four, and of course we have to have an oxygen atom on that, at that position, and there isn't one in citrate. We will first dehydrate the molecule. That will create a double bond here, and that intermediate in brackets is aconitate. Then we'll add another water molecule, only the OH is now going to be on position number four. So we've accomplished our goal of moving that hydroxyl group to form our product, isocitrate. The enzyme is aconitase, and it's named for this intermediate aconitate. This is readily reversible, indicated by the double arrows. So we're studying with isocitrate, a six carbon compound. Remember, one of our goals is to extract two carbon atoms as CO2, and we're going to do the first of those steps in this reaction. Here we have isocitrate. We're going to extract that carboxyl group in red here. We're also going to oxidize the hydroxyl group at position number four to a carbonyl group. And so overall, this reaction is an oxidative decarboxylation. In the first step, in our first intermediate, we oxidize the OH to form the carbonyl, and the electrons that are extracted are passed to NAD+. Here's our first NADH product. 
This is the intermediate here in brackets that gets rapidly decarboxylated. Remember, carboxyl is a very good leaving group. And here's our second intermediate in brackets here. We pick up a proton to form our final product, alpha ketoglutarate. As you can see, the two intermediates in brackets have uh, several negative charges and that's stabilized by a manganese in the active site of the enzyme. So this is a good example of metal ion catalysis. As you can see by the one-way arrows, this is an irreversible reaction. So now we're down to five carbon atoms and in step four we're going to release another carbon as CO2 and this is another oxidative decarboxylation. In this case, however, we're going to add our product to coenzyme A. So we're going to remove the carboxyl group here in red from alpha ketoglutarate, and we're going to transfer that molecule to CoA, and our product is succinyl CoA. So the oxidation is conserved, the energy of that oxidation is conserved in that thioester bond. Remember the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and that transition step? That was also an oxidative decarboxylation and we transferred the group to coenzyme A. The steps are identical. It also involves a three enzyme complex just like the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. In fact, it even uses the same E3 enzyme. So the chemistry is the same. And now we have our four carbon compound and we're getting close to uh, our final product to regenerate oxaloacetate. So we've added two carbons to the cycle as acetyl-CoA and we've extracted two carbons as CO2. As illustrated here, however, the two carbons that enter the cycle are not the two carbons that leave the cycle as CO2. This is a figure from your book and I've numbered the carbon atoms for your convenience. In oxaloacetate I've numbered the carbon atoms 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's our acetyl 2 carbon unit in red and we attach that to carbon number 2. So here's carbon number one of our original oxaloacetate molecule, and that's the carbon atom that's released as CO2 in step three. In step four, we release the end carboxyl group of alpha ketoglutarate, and that was C4 on oxaloacetate. So the two carbon atoms we released were actually originally in oxaloacetate. The net effect is still the same. Two carbon atoms enter the cycle as acetyl-CoA and two carbon atoms leave as CO2. In our next video lesson, we'll consider steps five through eight of the citric acid cycle and we'll see why we attached the succinyl group to coenzyme A in step four. We will also see a reduced molecule that is produced in the citric acid cycle that we did not see in the process of glycolysis.